done slow, stupid, the list goes on and on. I guess when you believe in something, you don't pay attention to the little things. Amy and I had been married for almost 10 years when I found her with her suitcases at the front door. Honey, we need to talk. No, she didn't say that, but you get the idea. She was like two sheets in the wind, and the third was half-drained in her favorite wine glass. Going somewhere? Yes, I'm leaving you. In that envelope over there is a divorce petition. I don't love you anymore, so there's no reason for us to continue this farce. Does the exchange really matter? That told me all I needed to know. Little Miss Churchwoman was a whore. I made a 180 and fed myself at Denny's. When I returned, her car and suitcases were gone. It was my turn to make a few trips, one would have been too much, and ten wouldn't have been enough. My ears and toes hurt when I woke up in the living room chair. This thing wasn't meant for sleeping. I've always been shy. That's why I always found myself one step ahead or one step behind. Amy was the one following me. We were both 22 when we got married. For the first eight years, everything went fine. The last two years, the relationship became strained. I never developed into the kind of man she needed. Leaving didn't come as a surprise to me once I connected the dots, but that doesn't mean my heart wasn't ripped out of my chest. It was ripped out, but life goes on. If she doesn't need me, then I'll move on. It will take some time, but I will come back and be a stronger person. The easiest way to avoid gossip at work was to skip all the couple's events. I declined invitations to several couple's gatherings that Amy and I used to attend. My attorney was a grandmother who knew no measure, she basically gave orders about what I should and shouldn't do. For the moment, I was enjoying it. The last thing I wanted to do was dwell on that bitch. Just get me out of this relationship. When Amy showed up for her court-ordered counseling session, arm-in-arm arm with some dude with slick back hair, my hatred for her increased manifold. No one wants to be cast aside. What a waste of time and money these counseling sessions are. My attorney tells me that after counseling ends, it will be another six weeks or so before a final order is issued. I can continue to do chores around the house that Amy will never agree to do. I had to give up some liquid assets to keep the house, but I had too much invested in making it what I wanted it to be to leave it. The women in my life were reduced to my lawyer grandmother. I avoided contact with the opposite sex when and if possible. I don't usually play the lottery, but the woman behind the counter was too damn nice to just walk away from her. After paying for my coffee and donut, I went back to the line. She's a hottie and a flirt and knows it well. When I got to the front of the line, she greeted me again. Can't get enough of me, can anyone? Not yet, no. What can I do for you this time? Ten dollars for the Megabucks raffle. Remember me when you win. Hell, I'll remember you even if I lose. Well, aren't you a sweet talker? I'd already mentioned how cute and flirty she was, her tag had Bristol's name written on it. I wonder what her story was. The job wasn't a job. I really liked my job. On my lunch hour, I watched the kids play at the elementary school across the street from the company parking lot. Such joy, such energy. I'd been watching them long enough to remember some of them. There's the pixie girl who can run faster than anyone, boy or girl. There's the potbelly boy who sits alone on the swings all the time. I wonder if his parents are the cause of this problem. There are three girls who go to the far corner. My favorite is the boy who does somersaults until the bell rings. I watch the news after the soccer game on Sunday. We know the winning ticket was sold at the come and go in Thornton, but the winner has not yet been announced. That's exactly where I bought my ticket. I hope this cutie sold it because I'm sure they'll get a bonus. Did I really throw my ticket away with my empty coffee cup? Damn, I don't remember. I'll dig through the trash in my truck in the morning. I didn't actually remember the lottery ticket until Thursday morning. Fortunately, or unfortunately, I didn't throw it away. Where did you go to find out the winning numbers? 
There was a phone number and website printed on the ticket. I called and wrote down last Saturday's winning numbers. After hanging up, I compared them to the ticket and then called the number again. Holy crap! I wrote them down correctly, and I am the lone winner. Things were not going well in my head that day. If not for a little luck, I would have crippled myself and a co-worker. My mind was spinning. Get that bitch. She can get her deal. I'm in for a big win. Just in case, I contacted my divorce lawyer and made an appointment. Another couple hundred bucks down the drain? Not this time. Sorry, Derek. You're not divorced yet. Amy gets half. But she's already filed for divorce. I bought it after she filed. For me, it was my money. I bought it with tough shit. Until the court orders a divorce, she's entitled to half. No way in hell I'm going to split it with her. What if I give it to my parents? If she finds out you bought the ticket, any transaction other than an arm's length transaction would give her the right to collect half from you. What is an arm's length transaction? Someone other than a relative or business partner with no right to demand a refund. What is a claim for a refund? They have to give you something in return. Exposed facto. So she won't get half of it, only if I give the money to a stranger or don't cash it in at all. Quite. Go home and think about it. Congratulations, Derek. Yeah, thanks. What a shit I am. How much do I hate her? Enough to cheat myself out of a lot of money. I hid the winning ticket in the freezer, under last summer's trout. There was another night of drinking when the early light of dawn awakened me from my drunken slumber. I called in sick. I have so many sick callers that they were more shocked that I finally used one of them. When I walked up to the coffee in donut line, Bristol didn't recognize me. Bristol, do you have five minutes to meet me after you get home from work today? After ten seconds of angry looks at me, sure. I get off at two. I'll meet you over there by my beat-up Toyota. Great. Keep the change. What's your name? Derek. I parked at the Toyota at 145. Was I sure this was what I wanted to do? I must have been in the land of never when there were several taps on the window. I rolled down the glass. Your car or mine? asked Bristol. It's warmer in mine. Bristol slid into the passenger seat. Bet you sold that lottery winnings, huh? I don't know. No one's showing up yet. I know you sold that lottery winner. Oh really? And how do you know that? Because I bought it, and I don't need it. I held out the winning envelope to Bristol. Yes, of course, she studied the ticket. You said your name was Derek. Does it look like the real one? It does. If I cash it in, half of it goes to my soon-to-be ex I hate her so much, I'd rather be broke than add to her coffers. It's yours, free and clear. I knew Bristol was excited because there wasn't the slightest cold breeze in the car. What's the catch? Don't chip in when I buy coffee and a donut. With a concerned look on her face, she asked, do I ever? No but a rich girl like you can change. And please, don't ever tell anyone who gave you a ticket. My life is shitty enough as it is to have people second-guessing me as well. Bristol pressed my head against her chest and squeezed the life out of me. Her eyes clouded with tears as she let me come up for air. Thank you, Derek. You're welcome, Bristol. Spend them wisely. Bristol kissed me as passionately as no woman had ever kissed me. I hope I did the right thing. On the news that night was an amazing story about a come-and-go clerk becoming the state's new multimillionaire. I'll probably never see Bristol again since, according to the story, she quit her job after checking a ticket. It was fun to watch the news coverage of Bristol's life-changing story. She was divorced and had children, ages 2 and 4. She lived with her parents, who watched the kids until her shift ended at 2 o'clock. Now she was a full-time mom and drove a new SUV. 
They said she took a non-annuity payment that was just under 2 million after taxes. I hope she doesn't go bust and fall for some slick scammer. After a week of coverage, the Bristol story disappeared from you. As soon as the divorce was granted, I started dating again. The first few ended with the good old, I really like you, Derek. I hope we can be friends. It was too depressing, so I immersed myself in the life of a permanent bachelor. Fifteen months after turning in my ticket, I stood in line to pay for my coffee and donut. The sweet smell of perfume wafted behind me. A woman whispered, wait for me in your car. I wish I could say I recognized the voice, but I didn't. The lady was wearing a hat and sunglasses, even though the morning sun had just risen in the eastern sky. She was dressed smartly. There was no one waiting outside my car, but I didn't pull away while the engine idled. The sweet-smelling woman slid into the passenger seat. She held out an envelope to me. What's this? When the woman removed her hat and glasses, I recognized Bristol. It's a prenup. Good. Why do I need a prenup? Because if you're going to marry a rich girl, she's going to want certain protections. A glint appeared in her eyes. My bad. I completely inadvertently asked you to marry me. I forgive you. Little things like that can slip your mind. Didn't you say you wanted to marry quickly? Well, sort of. I said I'm getting ready for marriage, and no matter how good you look, I need to speed up the process. So sign the damn prenup, and let's go get a marriage license. I want to get married on Valentine's Day. And what makes you think I'm not a sadist who will torture you? Because I've spent a lot of time studying you. I know more about you than your mother. I know all about Amy and her affair before she filed for divorce. I can understand the pain you went through because I went through something similar myself. I know you are a much stronger person than I am, and what you did with that lottery ticket speaks volumes about your character. I found a man who loves what he does for a living and who has given up on women. I have no competition, which is sad because you have a lot to give. The only thing I'm not sure about is whether you're ready to be a father to my little girls. Judging by how much you admire kids in elementary school, I think you're up to it. I'm willing to take the risk that you will, if they love you. So, are you willing to make an honest woman of me? Well, that's the best offer I've gotten today. I grinned. And what would that be, Derek? Oh, what the hell? Let's get married. I called in sick, let my lawyer read the prenup, and we headed to the courthouse to get our marriage license. We were married a few days later, on Valentine's Day, of course. Since it was Valentine's Day, wore a skimpy red lace dress as she lured me into the bedroom. While my instincts demanded to finish quickly, Bristol slowed me down. She seemed to sense when I was getting closer to my goal. A man's ego is quite something. I was very proud of myself for being able to do this for Bristol. Epilogue, although Bristol could have bought a nice house, she decided to upgrade her parents' house for them. They thought I was some kind of fraud and tried desperately to talk Bristol out of moving in with me. It took Christmas before she discovered that we were actually married. Bristol says she never told anyone how she ended up with the lottery ticket. At the time of our wedding, she still had about 90% of what she received. We talked at length about investing, and now she has more than the original amount. I still grab a coffee and a donut on my way to work. I don't flirt with any of the clerks. I've never crossed paths with Amy, and I have no desire to. If she hadn't left, I never would have won the lottery, and I'm not talking megabucks. As for parenthood, I love it. Crystal's ex is an idiot for leaving such a loving woman and those two wonderful girls.